Of all the time-saving Procreate tips and techniques I share with my UCLA students, one of their favorites by far is when we turn their daytime renderings and elevations into twilight renderings and lighting studies in about 10 minutes or less. It's super easy, so get out your iPad and follow along as we do these amazing twilight renderings and lighting studies. So let's pull up an image for this investigation, and you can use any image that you have, but I'm going to go ahead and Google Average American Home, and I'll click on Images and look for something with really great uh, curb view, curb presence, as they say. And I like this. This has got everything, the windows we want, a nice front lawn. So I am going to right-click on that and store that to my iCloud drive. It's dropped off the screen there. And now I can come over and look in iCloud Drive and there, give it a new name. So I remember it, always a big problem with me. I have a lot of stuff in my iCloud Drive, so I try to give things clear names before I finish with them. And now uh, I can go over to iCloud Drive and double check that it's there. There it is, Twilight Tutorial, all ready to load into the iPad. And it looks pretty good. So let's uh, turn this into a Twilight view, shall we? So the first thing I'm going to do is launch Procreate at the bottom of my screen. And now I'm going to add a new 11 by 17 by 300 DPI sheet. This is just a sheet size that I constantly work to. It ties into the ecosystem of all my grids and scales and stencils. So that's why I like to use it. So to bring that image in from the iCloud Drive, I'll click on the Actions menu and insert a file. And be sure to choose your iCloud Drive. It can be a little confusing. And right at the top, there's the image, Twilight Tutorial. Good on me for naming it correctly. And that came in pretty small relative to the pixel size of the sheet. So I'm just going to use the Move and Transform tool in uniform mode and stretch it up to the size that I want to work at during this tutorial. So there's our image, and now we're going to head right into the twilight part of this. So let's go to the Layers menu, and you want to add a new layer. And I am going to proactively tap the end here, the blending mode, and turn it to Multiply, so that no matter how dark something is, you're always going to see something below it. And then I'm going to pick this gray violet here, okay? If you need to go into your palette uh, as we're doing this, go ahead and pick just something slightly violet. And uh, you'll see later that it has to do with being a, a contrasting color with the kind of yellow of, of normal uh, light that you see. And now I've got my layer and my color, and I'm going to drag and drop that color. Just tap and hold the color and drag it across that layer, and it'll fill the whole layer. Then I'm going to go into the Adjustments menu and adjust the brightness of that twilight layer. Make it a little darker to be more dramatic for this demonstration. And you can see if I turn that off now, that's about how intense it is. Now I'm going to go back down to the original layer, and I'm going to use the selection tool in rectangular mode to select each of these windows, okay? Uh, it could be in freehand, but I just want to emphasize that we're going to be in rectangle. I'm going to pull it across from the inside of the jams across the glass for each of these windows. And this is not being real precise. This is just for the purpose of uh, quickly showing you how dramatic all this is. So let's finish that up. Up here, I can leave leave out the uh, cross mullion. It's just as easy to make two quick rectangular selections. And I'll select this vent. I'm not sure what it is up there, but let's select it just to increase the drama. Maybe this little window way back here on the backyard barn or something. Now, with that selection, I'm going to go back to the twilight layer. And toggling on that layer shows you clearly those selections. So now I'm going to use three finger swipe to swipe down and hit the cut and paste mode, which lifts that selection off and onto its own layer. Now notice that became opaque. So I have to go back into multiply mode and that makes them once again similar to the twilight where I can see the details underneath. And I'm going to turn the opacity way down so it looks like the lights are as bright as possible 
inside. So that's the beginning, but that's that's only the beginning. So let's keep going and check out how cool this is. So we're going to go back to the twilight layer and duplicate it just to be safe. And there you can really see how that multiply multiplies the darkness. But I want to keep a safe layer so I can now go in with the soft brush eraser. I use the airbrush eraser from my architect's brush set. And I'm going to just softly, well, soften the transition between the clear cut areas of the interior windows and the uh, exterior twilight layer. And that's because it's going to sort of look like those windows are glowing. Maybe there's a little fog in the atmosphere. Uh, maybe the light just tends to come out and bounce on things. They would definitely bounce on that roof like I, like I love to do. And then I'm going to make it bounce on the shrubs that are on the underside of each of these windows. So that looks, again, it's the illusion that the light from the inside is glowing and spreading out to the outside. And you can see those shrubs sort of come alive just exactly as if uh, they were reflecting interior light. And let's, um, let's get these over on the edges and maybe this one to the... Uh, well, this is cool. Let's try now to um, make it look like that light is also spilling out on the grass of that front lawn. Now, this is a little more exaggerated. If I were doing this myself for, say, a home listing or something, uh, I wouldn't be quite this contrasty, but I want to make sure it shows up in your or on your screen as well. Let's tap the driveway. Let's add this bush to the left of the house. And, uh, you know, the, the next level of this is uh, I want to make it look like we've put some spotlights. This is where the lighting study comes in. I want to make it look like we've put some spotlights in that are shining up on the house. So I'm going to add a layer and I'm going to go back into my palette and choose, not choose a white, but choose a, a very slightly warm white, just sort of the same color as incandescent light. And you may be asking yourself right now, why is he adding light? I thought we always erased light away from the twilight layer. Well, you'll see in a moment. Um, first of all, I'm going to add in these spots. I'm going to use the flare brush, the number 34 flare brush in my architect's brush set. And I'll just pop in. I think I've got the wrong brush there. Yeah, it's not high lit with blue, so I'll go ahead and make it blue. Now I know I've got that brush. And I am going to add very slight flares. They're probably bigger than they would be in real life, but I want to make sure this shows up in the demonstration. And just like a lighting designer, I'm actually going to lay them out along the lawn, uh, corresponding to these areas of the wall and the columns and the entry that I want to light up. So now you'll see why we picked that yellow before. I'm going to add a layer. And instead of multiply, I'm going to go to overlay. Now, overlay is probably the second most important blending mode you need to know because it is truly magic. It is going to allow me to add light up on these walls with this airbrush once again, the universally useful airbrush. And I'll make it the right size, I think, for that first wash. And that warm white yellow is now being added to the twilight layer, but add it in a layer that I can also toggle on or off if I, if I did something wrong or if I want to change it later. So it has this magical effect of looking exactly as if light is being washed up against an object, even, even if I'm going over that twilight layer. So that's why I love this for the amount of control it gives me. So I'll try and light the, what I consider the architectural features of this that would make it even more appealing to someone that wanted to buy this house, say. Or if I'm a lighting designer, of course, I'm trying to make it maximally appealing to the owners. And let's go ahead and, while we're doing this with this additive light effect in overlay mode, let's add a little bit of light spill to the sidewalk. And maybe a little to the top of the grass there in that median. And just to show you how cool this is, I can even pretend I've got an uplight in the trees. I'm not doing a very precise job here. I'm showing a little too much glow around the bark. 
But you get the idea. You can literally use this like a spotlight or a flashlight. Like look up here on the chimney. I'll just rub that very warm white light into that as if you're just picked out that chimney. Maybe that's where you hang your Santa Claus sculpture at Christmas time. Uh, anything it takes to sell the job, right? Now, remember that layer that we separately isolated the uh, cutouts for the windows on? Well, let's go back to that and just to underscore how you can adjust that after the fact. By using the opacity, I can turn down the intensity or the apparent intensity of the lights inside just by sliding that. It's almost like a rheostat for the inside lights of my house that I can adjust. And if you look at the layers that we created, that uh, we had the safety layer, and the original layer, that's duplicate the uh, the layer that we've been working on. And again, look at, look at how dark it is all of a sudden. That really shows you what we've done, the sort of subtractive process. But let's use that as a filter as well. Let's use that as a way to final adjust the intensity of the twilight effect, which I find very useful. And it's as simple as clicking a button and duplicating, and you've got all that control over your drawing. Now, I teach this technique and many, many more techniques in the online courses I created. But in the meantime, stick with me. There are many more Procreate and Morfolio and SketchUp for iPad lessons on this channel. And you might want to check out this video right here as your next one. And I'll see you in the next video.